Hello, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com. In this exclusive interview that I'm about to reveal to you, you're going to hear from a great friend of mine. His name is Larry Wingett, and he calls himself the pit bull of personality. And in this interview, you're going to hear how you can save on your finances. You're going to hear how you should spend less than what you currently make and much, much more. So right about now, go get your pen and your pad and write down some notes. And this exclusive interview that I'm going to reveal to you is going to change your life. So check it out. Good evening, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson, Jr. And tonight I have another special treat just for you. Tonight I have an incredible person on the call, and he's a great friend of mine. His name is Larry Winget, and he is the author of the best self-titled book, You're Broke Because You Want to Be. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Larry Wingett to the call. Thanks, Arthur. Glad for uh, you having me on. Well, thank you, Larry. I'd like to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate the listeners about your powerful book, You're Broke Because You Want to Be. I gladly appreciate it. Well, my pleasure to be on here. I've, uh, I've written a lot of books. This is actually one of my very favorite books. It's about taking control of your personal finances and uh most people right now just barely get by. I want them to get control so they can actually start getting ahead. What I would like to know, and can you educate the listeners about who you are, and can you give them a brief background about what you do and how you come up with this powerful book, You're Broke Because You Want to Be? Well, for 20 years I've been a professional speaker. I've spoken to 400 of Fortune 500 companies. I've written uh, four best-selling books, uh, a number one Wall Street Journal best-selling book called Shut Up, Stop Whining, Get a Life, uh, uh, and others. What I've done is gone out and talked to groups around the world about the principles of success, prosperity, uh, and it's all really based on the idea of personal responsibility. I grew up dirt poor in Muskogee, Oklahoma, never had very much, made a decision in my life I was going to figure out what it took to get rich got rich, lost it all through a series of bad business mistakes. I went from broke to rich to bankrupt to multimillionaire, and I did it with the principles that I teach corporations, individuals, associations all over the world. And for those that don't know Larry, I'm just going to give you a brief background about his history. Larry Winget is a four-time New York Best Time Wall Street Journal best-selling author. He is a member of the International Speaker Hall of Fame, he has starred in his own television series and appeared in national television commercials. Larry is a regular contributor on many news shows on the topics of money, personal success, and business. He is the trademark pit bull of personal development and the world's only irritational speaker. Why do people label you that, the irritational speaker? Well, the world's just full of motivational speakers, and uh, trying to motivate a person to go from where they are to a better place. I don't think that works. I don't think you can motivate anybody to go from where they are to a better place. What I do is try to make you so irritated with where you are that you'll do anything that it takes to get to a better place. See, I think the positive attitude thing, the motivation thing, is worn out, and I'm not sure that it's effective. So what I do is try to point out to people by sort of holding a mirror up to their lives, their business, and their finances to show them just where they are and what got them in the position that they're in and prove to them that they can live a better life personally through their business and financially if they just take responsibility for it, get a little bit irritated with where they are, and go to work. I was reading your incredible book, You're Broke Because You Want to Be, and one of your chapters was actually elaborating about how to get out of debt. Can you explain to my listeners a little more about that? You know, getting out of debt, I've worked with a lot of people. I did have my own television show on A&E for several years. I've, uh, I've talked to, I get a hundred emails a day from people who are in trouble financially. And what's interesting to me is when it comes to debt, I have yet to deal with one person who really knows where they are financially, meaning they don't know how much money they got to work with, and I don't know anybody right now who knows exactly how much money they owe, who they owe it to, when it's due. 
They just don't have a good grasp. So the first thing you got to do when it comes time to get out of debt and you make up your mind you want to do that is to get a grasp on where you are, which means you have to know how much money you have on hand and how much money you owe to other people and when that money is due. After you've done that, you got to figure out what got you in the mess that you're in. You see, I believe that your money always goes to what's important to you. So I can walk in somebody's house or I can look at your checkbook or your credit card statement and I'd know in five minutes what's important to you. No matter what you tell me, if you said my family was important to me and yet you didn't spend money on your family making sure that they were financially secure, I'd have to call you a liar because your money's not going to, to back that statement up. So I can look at your credit card statement, walk through your house and say, no, it looks to me like clothes are important to you or being cool is important to you or that big screen TV is important to you. I've had people that their cigarettes were important to them because they were spending more money on their cigarettes than they were paying their bills. So what you have to do is track how you spend your money. And then once you know what caused the problem, you have to be willing to make sure you do whatever it takes to move past that problem, stop spending your money on it, and start spending it on the things that are really important in life, which mostly people say, well, I can't even be happy. You're going to take all that stuff away from me. Mostly what people need to realize is that there's nothing in the world make you happier than being financially secure, having your bills paid, some money in savings, and know that you're moving toward uh, where you'd like to be really in terms of your money. So is it good to write down a solid plan and follow that plan each and every single day in regards to reaching prosperity? Well, you have to write everything down. I'm a big believer in making lists. The fastest way to get hold on how you spend your money is to make a list on where you're spending your money. So get out a sheet of paper and track how you spend your money every single day. Do that for a month and you'll find out just how stupidly you'll spend your money. And then what you have to do is figure out on paper what you'd like your life to look like. Only 3% of society have written down goals for the life. 97% never write down anything. And those 3% who have the written down plan for their lives make more money and accomplish more than the other 97% put together. So, yeah, you do have to have a written down plan. You have to know in writing what got you in the mess, and you know you have to have a written down plan on what you'd like for it to look like. And then you have to write down the actions you're going to take every single day to move you between where you are and where you'd like to be. Let's say that one of my listeners are having trouble with raising capital. Can you give the listeners one specific tip in regards to how can they raise capital to expand their business? Well, first you have to have a, and this is the reason most people don't get capital, is they don't have a solid business plan to show somebody how they're going to get paid back. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't sell an idea to an investor, to a bank, to an individual, to another entrepreneur, unless you give them a solid idea of how they're going to get their money back. They want you to be successful, but really all that anybody wants when they advance you money is to make sure they make money on their own money. So you've got to have a written down plan that says, this is how I'm going to pay your money back. People, it's amazing to me that they go into banks or talk to investment groups and they don't have a plan for telling people how they're going to get their money back. That's dumb. So let's say if you want to borrow $10 million, then basically you've got to have a $10 million business plan to put in front of <laughs> You want to borrow $10 million, you have better have a $20 million business plan. <laughs> But that's not happening much these days. I mean, most people, that's really not the issue. The, the really what the, the bulk of the, the, the United States is faced with today is how do I pay my bills? When you realize that the average 50-year-old in America today has $2,500 to their name, $2,500, which means, let's say, over the course of 25 years, and let's say they start to work when they're 25, most people start to work long before they're 25, but you've worked 25 years. You're now 50 years old. The best you've been able to do is save $100 a year, $8.33 a week, $2. Uh, I mean, $2 a week, $8.33 a month is the best you've been able to do in 25 years. That's where most people really...